This is part 2 of my previous tutorial based on the ESP32 and Firebase in which I explained how to set up your Firebase database account for the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module so that the sensor data can be monitored in real time from anywhere around the world. I highly recommend first watch this tutorial and then you can resume from here because in this tutorial I'll be using the same Firebase database account. In today's episode, which is the version 2, you will learn how to design your own Firebase Android application using Android Studio. For the demonstration purposes, I have connected the DHT11 temperature and humidity module with the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module. The temperature and humidity values from the ESP32 are sent to the Firebase Android application. The ESP32 power supply PCB board used in this video is sponsored by the PCBWay company. PCBWay is quite professional in the field of PCB manufacturing. You can try their services at extremely low prices. Only $5 for 10 PCBs and $30 in total for 20 PCBs assembly. Besides this, the new members also get a $5 bonus. The Gerber files of the PCB board used in this project can be downloaded from the PCBWay official website. You can find a link in the description. The temperature and humidity values which are sent using the ESP32 module can be monitored on the computer screen by opening your Google Firebase database account and can also be monitored on the Android cell phone using a specially designed Firebase application. This is an IoT Firebase Android application as this cell phone application works only if the internet connection is available. If you watch this tutorial and also read my article which is available on electronicclinic.com, you will be able to design your own advanced level Firebase Android applications. The programming is very simple and can be easily modified by anyone. Without any further delay, let's get started. The components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. Let's first start with the 5 volt regulator power supply based on the LM7805 voltage regulator. This is the same 5 volt regulated power supply I have been using for the Note MCU ESP8266 Wi Fi module. J1 is the female power jack, and this is where we connect a 12 volt adopter, battery, or a solar panel. Two 470 microfarad capacitors are connected at the input and output sides of the voltage regulator. A 330 ohm resistor is connected in series with a 2.5 volt LED. This is a current limiting resistor. The output of the voltage regulator is connected with the 5 volt pin of the ESP32 module and the ground of the power supply is connected with the ground of the ESP32 module. The DHT11 temperature and humidity module VDD pin is connected with the ESP32 module 3.3 volt pin. The data pin of the DHT11 sensor is connected with the GPIO15 pin 3 of the DHT11 sensor is not connected while the last pin of the DHT11 sensor is connected with the ground. This is the ESP32 power supply board manufactured by the PCBWay company. As you can see the PCB quality is really great. The silk screen is quite clear and the Blake solar mask looks amazing. I am 100% satisfied with their work. The power supply PCB board designing and soldering is already explained in my previous video tutorial. I will provide a link in the description. Finally, I connected the DHT11 sensor with the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module as per the circuit diagram already explained. Our hardware is ready. This is the Firebase account which I created in my previous tutorial. So I will continue with the same Firebase account. 
so that you can easily follow all the steps. So after creating your 5S account, then the next step is to program the ASP32 module. Before you start the programming, first of all, make sure you download all the necessary libraries from our website, electronicclinic.com. You can find a link in the description. As you can see, this is the same exact program which I used in my previous tutorial. This time I did a few changes, that is, I added some code for the DHT11 sensor. The purpose of this code is to read the temperature and humidity values and then send these values to the Google Firebase database account. From there, the values are then displayed on the Android cell phone application designed in Android Studio. I have already uploaded this program and let's watch if we can send the temperature and humidity values to the Firebase account. As you can see the code is working. Now we can start working on the Firebase Android application designing using the Android Studio. Due to the tutorial time limitation and a lot of settings I have explained all the steps in the article and I'm sure you will have no problem in following all the steps if still you need any help let me know in a comment support me on patreon for more videos I hope you like today's episode like and share this video with your friends see you in next episode and thanks for watching